So, boys, today we're going to be doing a max range beam interrogator, but we're doing it as strong arms for even more weapon range. However, we're going to have much lower damage since we don't have the interrogators plus 100% status damage, and we're going to have less weapons available, but as a driller base class, we will still have a ton of different beam weapons available here. And we're going to hopefully get some gold scanners so we can get a ton of beam range and just blanket the entire screen and beams later on. Uh, I guess we'll take some decent upgrades for that early on. This is the only source of damage I have currently. And we can get some overclocks to add some status effects to it to keep it somewhat useful. But I think it's going to be pretty hard to scale the axe anyways. I don't think you get potency available to it even when you get the status effects that it leaves behind on trails. Seems like you only really get those on weapons that actually convert the damage type. So it'll help a bit early on, but probably not really going to scale into the later game. Uh, Krakatoa Sentinel, that's fantastic for a beam based build. We can potentially have that mine stuff for us, and then if we get some scanners that's a lot of extra resources. Well, that's a pretty insane start. Level 2 plus 1 beams on probably the best beam weapon in the game. Now we just need a gold scanner here. We'll grab a bit of pickup radius. Nope. Ah, uh, we have two rerolls. YOLO. Okay, there we go. Reload. Let's try and pump the levels on that to get the terrain mining going with our gold scanner now. The range does work on these from the strong arm rates. 129% from meta? Does meta give weapon range? That must be the strong arm, right? It should work on any weapon with a range stat like that, so... Potency... Double shellback, but the Krakatoa Sentinels with plus one beam have fantastic single target. We can actually get some rocks on them potentially here as well. Well, we have to actually drop some Sentinels for them to stand in to actually get the damage going. Reload speed is still quite slow. That one will get some good damage on him. I have to take a few hits here. Uh, mining is kind of helpful currently. I think I'm going to take this to help me move around this level a bit faster currently until we can actually get the mining turrets going. Looks like we might have gotten all the resources. I have 74 nitra and I did reroll once. Ooh, perfect timing on a magnet too. Man, that is a sick first stage. Killed one of them pretty quickly as well, so we can farm XP for a bit. Let's go for... I don't know, everything here is tempting. Uh, let's try and get the turrets going, I think. We got a bit of mining speed. Okay, nothing amazing here. We'll grab the reload speed for them.
Let's go weapon range, trying to max that out of these. Um, I guess we'll grab a bit more on the axe, it's close to an overclock. And then here, we want more beam weapons to get the range available for that. Flamethrower, that works. Damage, we want the turrets. Reload speed over crit damage, turret level, uh, flamethrower level. Big paint job. I think I will check the overclock there. Oh man, no mining. You can get massive damage on them with the plus one beams. Add the acid trail to that. I guess we'll get some more turret damage. Okay, mining speed just became a lot more important. So passing up that purple one is actually going to hurt quite a bit now, rip. More turrets, paint job, I guess so. Uh, grab some damage early on. We are quite low on that as a non-interrogator. Pick up radius, although that's not quite as important now. Lifetime. So I guess I'll try and find the Firefly Hunter drone? Wait, no, that's only available on interrogator. I don't know if there's any other mining weapons. Oh yeah, we have the grenades. I could grab either the cryo grenade or the high explosive. And have those as just a mining weapon. They'll be a pretty slow attack speed though with no reload speed on them. No, actually that'll unlock stuff with the axe that I don't really want. Yeah, I think we're stuck with no mining weapons here then. Unless I really want to mess up my upgrade pool. Reload. Guess we just need to look for a lot of mining speed here. Take the turrets, have those explode in a puddle of fire on death, even more burning effects. I guess we have the double exploding turret combo, disposable, plus the level 18. Should be some decent damage whenever they fade, but I'm not going to build for that specifically, so yeah, we could go the cryo. That would give us explosive and throwable upgrades, which I don't really want, so I think I'm just grabbing the sledge bump here. Oh well, plus one beams for that. Flamethrower level. XP scanner? Sure. Big reload. Sentinel, we have that fully done, but none of these are really amazing. I'll grab a bit of crit, I guess. armor. Let's see, I guess ideally I would have gotten the wave cooker as my fourth weapon, so that way I wouldn't have the heavy reload upgrade available. And then that would also give me basically all fire weapons if I can get the fire trail added to the throwing axe.
but my mining speed is pretty low and my damage is pretty high so we don't really have a ton of time once the elites come out the triple beam sentinels are gonna shred them level 18 already on stage 2 paint job Big mining speed, we need that now with no mining available for the turrets. We could probably use more pickup. It's a lot of XP to leave behind. Weapon range, fire, potency. Bit of movement. Uh, I could use some more movement and range for that, and then we are basically out. Big reload if we want that. It actually does have a pretty long reload, so I'm down for that. And that puts it at full legendary so far. Try and drag the Praetorians and detonators against the wall, that'll help us mine out the difficult rocks a bit faster here. More turrets! We could get decent value out of these, but we could also get another scanner! Or a weapon box, actually. Cryo cannon plus one beams, not bad, not bad at all. We do need to get the burning effects for the next overclock for that to make it extremely strong. But that is a fantastic pickup. Plus one beams for that. See, yep. Potency reload speed for four different weapons. Uh, it's not the best stat for those. 
probably try and grab some levels for some of the weapons now. We do want to get the overclocks for them since the multi-tool and the encabulator artifacts are fantastic with the weapon box adding even more tags and overclocks available. Grab a big reload speed for that. I will take reload for the turrets though, that's one of the more fun stats for them. Big damage, sure. We don't have the interrogator's damage penalty, so there might actually be some potential for that. And definitely take a weapon range for the turrets as well. Luck, some more movements. Lifetime is pretty nice on the turrets. That only works on two out of our weapons. I think I'll pass on that. I'll grab a little bit of survivability, reload for that, paint job, mining speed definitely. Um, potency is very good on that. It freezes and burns if you can get the overclock for it. Sure. Potency gives us an overclock. We can go reload speed, don't want to lower the potency there. Although I actually could have strong arm since we don't have the damage penalty. But I feel like having really high damage amplification from the huge acid sacks is just so valuable on that weapon. It seems pretty good at applying them. Mining speed still, since none of our five weapons can do it now. Fury rolls, sure. Gold scanner or coupons are both fantastic. Let's go another gold scanner, and then here we'll take a level on that. Lock off of that. Burning, very nice. Fantastic fifth weapon from the weapon box for the build. 
Even have a magnet waiting in the top left now. Go for some potency here. Lifetime, pretty good for the turrets, sure. We're almost out of time, that guy's gonna die to hit dots pretty soon. Potency, beam damage, I don't... well... I mean, we don't have the penalty. I guess we'll get a bit. Weapon range, take that every time. Bit of reload. Reload for the turrets, yep. Grab some weapon range for that, although I'm pretty low on Nitra, so let's hold a bit. Big paint job will help get overclocks. Bit more survivability. Lifetime luck. May as well. Ooh, big status damage. We can grab something else on top of that. Ooh, lock that. Big movements. That'll help us be even greedier at the end of the stages, collecting even more gold and XP off of the rocks and then still making it back in time, hopefully. Let's go for some levels on this. I still want to get the fire trail for it. Uh, we're getting a bit light on the rerolls now, so let's go ahead and grab the divers for some multiplicative reload speed and just some great all-around sets. Decent 
decent weapon range for that. Potency gets the level 18, sure. Ah, uh, I'm thinking maybe weapon range to go with the strong arm stuff here. I think the plus three beams usually feels the nicest because it almost instantly freezes basically everything on the screen. But we do like mixing it up sometimes to see how the other stuff feels in certain situations. It actually is really nice having a strong freezing weapon to go with the throwing axes because then there's a pretty good chance that when I knock enemies into myself with the axes, a lot of the time they'll just be frozen and I won't take damage from them anyways it seems like. Pretty cool little combo there you don't see often with the axes and a freezing weapon. Use the paint job for some more overclock still. Weapon range, some more mining, probably don't want those, fire and potency, nah, uh, paint job, could grab an overclock there, but I could look for paint jobs as well, we have quite a bit of gold to spend, big lifetime, I'd rather have weapon range if I'm putting more levels on that I think. Nothing for me here. Lifetime. I think we'll pass on that. You have your objectives. Get it done, Miner.
Chemist is quite good, and we don't have a ton of Nitrous, so I think I'm fine with that. Uh, let's reroll that. We do have two scanners, bit of reload for almost everything. Swarm detected. Get ready for immunity shortage. In range, some nice stats for the beams if I want those, and we do have a lot of gold. Plus one beams, yep. Paint job. Damage isn't super relevant to it for how I'm building here. Luck. Pick up radius, we can get some reload there. Um, Damage is the most useful stat since it's damage or reload for that. And the reload will naturally get pretty low, but I don't think I'm going to grab that. Have there always been rocks out in the void like that? I don't think I've ever noticed that before. Huh. all those burn numbers over there, with the quad beams just melting them with massive weapon range. Gold tipped is a lot of damage, sure. With the two gold scanners. And we're getting fairly close to the end, so time to start ramping up the damage a bit more.
Oh, there's something up there. Nitro? You two have a lot of mining speed. That gets an overclock, or we can get some more weapon range. On this something that should already be pretty massive. going to only really grab weapon range now. I'll grab some mining since that'll pay itself back. We're gonna try and ramp up the gold tip a bit, I think. That's a fairly cheap level. We'll take luck. Reload would get an overclock, same with that. We'll definitely take the weapon range, grab plus one beams for that. And then probably reload over damage, more lifetime. Let's do like one more, I think. Ah, uh, I'll probably pass on all of that. We need some wep or some nitra in case we ever find weapon range for the turrets. Since I'm trying to stack that as much as possible. He's pretty solid, sure. Um, they're fine. I guess we'll go ration. We are fairly light on the defenses, and that'll help out a bit with my weakness currently. Oh god, the lag is getting pretty insane now. Stood a 
I think I'm mainly looking for cheap upgrades to get the overclocks on those. What else we got? And then global weapon range, maybe. That's fairly cheap. What else we got? Uh, probably not. I want another go. Nah. Next time we'll weapon range, up. yep. Mining, since that'll give me more gold back anyways. That's probably worth it. I don't have a ton of status damage, actually. For me here. Lifetime, sure. Works on a ton of stuff. Nothing Paint jobs, we want those. No fire trail, rip. Um, I guess I'll probably go weapon range here as well. Plus one beams, we take those. Status damage. Um, we don't have a ton of nitro left, so we'll hold that for gold tips. Big lifetime, yep. Um, Nitra's okay. I think, ideally, I want to get something for the weapon box, like the Turbo and Cabulator, or the other one. We have a couple rerolls. Multi-tool, there we go. That's one of them. We're at 155 global, and that goes up to 248%. Not bad. Big reload if we want that. It's kind of late for these. 40 gold. That actually will give me the most damage of the gold tips. I think with only one shot left, probably not taking that. We're also mostly holding the resources now just to get the gold tips really high. Let's go... this one is closer to an overclock, so we'll take a reload for it. Yeah, those guys are gonna melt on top of the turrets. Oh, you can knock them off the map! I did not know that. Decent weapon range. Sure. So a couple rerolls to look for some nice stuff for the turrets or some efficient paint jobs, I think. Big lifetime, I think I will snag that. We could grab one of these and bring it pretty close, but might look for a couple rerolls first. A bit for lifetime. Ah, uh, I guess. Paint job to finish that off just like we wanted. Plus three beams, some more status damage. We're almost out of Nitra, so let's go ahead and hold that for the gold tips damage. 
currently at 268% global. should be able to absolutely melt the boss if I can get some turrets set up close to him ahead of time. Ah, these are pretty bad. Status damage is solid. So last artifacts, Turbo and Cabulator or Pickled Nitro would be fantastic damage. I think we have most of the other really good stuff. Nitro Powder would be okay, but a lot weaker than the others. Actually, not sure if that's additive or multiplicative with gold tipped. It might be additive. We're at 347. I guess I'll try it. We're probably going to set up here, and he should be coming up fairly soon. So, 347. Still 347? 539. That's like 50% more? Must be additive, then, I guess since they're both artifacts, which is what I figured it probably would be. But if we get a bunch of turrets set up here, we probably won't lose too much damage on the gold tipped, and that'll still be a net gain. We can set up turrets here while still getting a bunch of gold. Let's turn the numbers on so we can see how high the burns will ramp up on this dude. Here we go! There's so many numbers I can't even see them! Oh my god, that's a lot of numbers on them. Well done, team. Immediate threat of threat eliminated. Objective completed. So that's the new and improved interrogator with even more weapon range. Quad beam turrets. How much range did we get on them? 215% from skill and 129% from meta. Up to 27.74. Reload time, 0.54. Still scaling potency and status damage, but we don't have the 100% from the interrogator. But I usually end up at a point where I'm actually trying to avoid getting damage on the interrogator anyways, so that I have more mining time. And then without having that, we don't even have to worry about it. We had a potential five burning weapons, but we didn't find the fire trail on the axe, unfortunately. The Acid Trail is probably more damage since you can't really scale up the damage itself on those without having potency available to them. Huge levels on the turret, ton of beams. Fortunately, we didn't get the mining, which kept this from being an absolutely godly build, but it was still pretty nuts. Had an early gold and XP scanner, a fantastic weapon box into another gold scanner, and a gold tip to go with those. Eleven point three million stacks on the turrets. Double explodey effects to combo together a little bit. One hundred fifty-four million fire damage. 
with the base effects we had about 37 million so we had about 117 million burn damage spread across these two and the cryo cannon once that got the frost burn had pretty large range on that as well with that combined with the strong armed so that's a few weapon specific upgrades We had about 7 million acid damage over time from the sludge pump. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.